Hi, on this video I'm going to be drawing this dog's mouth in pastel pencil. Now, at the moment I'm just putting a little bit of that background. Now the reason for that, as I say in most of my videos when I'm putting in this um, just a section of background, it helps you to judge the um, other areas if you've got a bit of background in it. Okay, so if you're looking at um, say the tooth on its own on the brown paper then you know that can skew off the colors a little bit as you're trying to judge them so by putting in an accurate representation of the background that kind of uh, takes that or, or eliminates that brings it from that paper color so we can assess the colors more easily so you don't need to go putting in a lot of background and filling in the whole background just a small amount is enough, especially if the background is kind of one flat colour as it is on most of this uh, reference photo and you don't want to muddy it. So just put a little bit on, that's uh, usually good enough. Now just on the edge of the tongue then we've got some of that obviously blue, uh, bright blue sky that's influencing that wet edge of the tongue. So I've just put a little bit of that in place as well. Now I also like to use a little bit of the same coloured pastel mat to check out colors you know put it right up by your reference photo check out the selection of colors see what's accurate and what's not what's your closest color to the area you want to put in so that's another just quick tip you know don't just guess it first of all you've got to look at the reference you've got to make an asset you know uh, estimation of the color of the pencil or the pastel that you think will be the closest then when you've selected out a couple of those pastel pencils as I did use a piece of that same color and it's got to be the same color or it doesn't work really same colored pastel matte paper put a bit of color on it and put it right up next to the reference photo and it's easier to work from printed reference photo than it is from a screen although I know lots of artists like to work from screens but you can do the same thing and put it right up by it but for ease, if, especially if you're struggling with colors, I'd suggest printing out a good quality print. I see lots of members, they print out and they print in a terrible quality print on just normal inkjet paper. And that's not gonna be good enough. And if what's the point of trying to match up to the color like that when it's a terrible print? You've gotta get a good print. Paper doesn't need to be expensive, but a good quality matte paper, that, that will do. So I laid a bit of that tongue colour down, then I put some black on top and I'm using a paper stump now, pastel stump, just to blend. It's a little bit of a small area for me to use my finger, so I'm using one of these just to blend that pastel and bed it into the paper. And you can see by putting the black on top, I've kind of simulated that very, very dark, uh, ready purple colour, which didn't have in pencils anyway so when you don't have a color you know you've got to do things like that you've got to lighten your colors by putting a lighter shade on top and darkening them as well by you know try out putting the dark underneath first and then putting the color on top and also try um, the other way around okay bit of a gray I can see here now what I'm what I'm doing as you get a lot of supplies, pastel supplies, it can get quite confusing because you may have so many pencils um, to try. Perhaps you've got three sets, or you may have perhaps you've got 150 pencils. And as you can see, I'm just testing out colors again on top. What you find then is, you know, you've got too much of a set to pick from all the time. So it gets really confusing. And sometimes to add to that, the color of the pencil shaft is not the actual color that comes out. That's why testing colors as I'm doing on screen now is a good thing to do. You can see I'm checking out which is the nearest pink for the tongue. So what I find useful is to go through your set at the very beginning. So if I'm working on this mouth, I went through my sets and I looked to see what was gonna be potentially the most accurate colors okay so I had a fairly wide range then I got my pastel paper my spare piece as you can see and I made all my little marks on this so if something was fairly accurate but not quite right I kept it out if it was seemed spot on I kept that out as well 
and if it was you know just nowhere near what I was going to use I put them away so I've still got the option obviously to go back and and pull out uh, pencils if I want but what it meant was I haven't haven't got a confusing array of say 100 200 pencils that I'm looking at all the time and trying to match colors I know the ones then that I've pulled out are as going to be as accurate as I've got in my set to work with so that helps to you know stop a bit of that um, overwhelming feeling that you've got too many pastels to pick from so using my stump on the end again blending in and when I want to clean that stump I've got a microfiber cloth in my lap and I just rub it and twirl the stump on there it takes off most of the um, pastel so you can see that's the base color down of the tongue now obviously I need to go much darker at the top and much lighter at the bottom but it's giving me a good base so now I'm coming in on top with a darker color that's a pit pastel pencil now the colors I'm using is kind of irrelevant because I've got a certain amount of sets most people haven't got the same sets as I've got they may have a different set so you've got to work out the colors and match them up for yourself I don't want to um, get all people doing the same thing and actually doing a paint by numbers kind of drawing you're not really going to learn much from that and perhaps you'll do an impressive drawing at the end but you know other than the first one or two perhaps if you're a very complete beginner you don't want to be trying to work from these color uh, pencil color type of um, formulas that that I see people give out uh, personally I'm not a fan of that at all because it means you all you can do is really copy the exact subjects that the artist is showing and then when you want to do something yourself then you're going to be stuck and you're not going to know how to pick your colors or match up your colors at all so we've got a bit of a darker rim around the edge what you'll find as well with pencils is that different brands have got kind of a, um, a really good range for some things and not for others uh, the pit and the Carbofello are quite good because they've, they've got a fairly broad range but then the Derwent which is not my favorite pencil at all has actually got a really good range of the flesh tones and the pinks in particular these pinky colors the one I'm using there at the moment is a Conti pencil they're not my favorite pencil either but as I said they've got some nice pink tones in there in there too now I need to lighten this tongue and I also want to subdue the color so I'm using it's kind of a very light bluey gray now the opposite to to the pink on the color wheel is onto the blue section of the color wheel so every time I add the complementary color the opposite then it's going to deaden the color and because it's lighter it's going to lighten it and deaden it slightly so that's the way you can kind of adjust and push your colors with pastels so you're not you don't have to have millions of different colors there is a, an element of which you can um, subdue just like we do with oil paints by putting on a complementary color Okay, so that's something I may not have pointed out uh, a lot in my other videos but it's something to, to try out on your scrap pieces of paper and to try these effects you know really really push it to see what happens when you put a complementary color on top of another color and also try it underneath the color as well but as you can see in, in that instance it did definitely deaden down subdue that pink color I've got lots of highlights to still go on there now pencils are very good when you've got a small area like the mouth when you've got larger areas like the the, the rest of the fur on the face then you know you can use those uh, larger pastels so your sticks and your pan pastels a bit more okay. 
can see I'm just reddening that up. I want to create some texture on the tongue as well. And when you see that I'm using a pencil that's got a wooden shaft like that, it's very often a pit pastel pencil. And only after I've done all that underwork do I start coming in with some whites. And you can see straight away you begin to get the appearance then of the um, wetness of the tongue, the shine to the edge. Now when I'm doing the tooth you can see that I've picked a colour that's not pure white. That's from the Carbothello range. But it's not far from white. It's a bit of a creamy colour and then I'll go into areas that need to be white as well. So don't think either that all teeth are pure white. You can see as we look at the the uh, part of the mouth of the dog on the reference photo we've even got some yellowing of the teeth as well so when you want realism keep that in mind this is another Carbothello pencil that's a very very light grey and as usual I say you don't pick up every colour or see every colour um, really on the screen as easily as I do in real life but at least it's showing you the techniques showing you exactly how I do it. A little bit of that kind of a sienna colour or a ochre colour at the bottom and then fine tuning it then a bit of the grey and white. So even, even on a single tooth you need to pay attention, detail it up, don't just put a white blob and expect it to look to look realistic. So I'm just going to carry on. I'm going to carry on doing all the teeth. Now I'm on that section. So here and there I need to put in some greys, some light greys, separate some of the teeth. But they'll only start to look real when I put the lip around the edge of it. So this actually got, you know, it's just like floating in the air at the moment. It looks like um, some of those false vampire teeth we'd have perhaps as a, a child. But once I get the lip in and a bit of the jaw as well, it'll start to look more realistic. So don't go giving up on elements when you're seeing them separated from their surrounding uh, elements as well. There you can see I'm putting in some of the pure white highlights, cleaning up the edges as well. Put a bit of this gum colour in. I'll add some richness to it, but I wanted to get some of these darks in while I'm down. On this section. So you can see it's, it's quite a lot of different colours in the mouth. It's not all pinks and purples and those colours. We've got lots of browns and that lip as well. And these go a lot lighter. So I'll add in some of that richness. And then I'll continue with the tooth. So we've got some greys in here. Nothing really dark. So the teeth are quite yellowy at the moment. Kind of an ochre colour. I don't want to make them look pure, pure white. Because it's very rare you'd see that anyway. On the, on the pet portraits you may get. So make sure you don't just think, oh, well, teeth are pure white. And I'll just go straight in and do little blocks of white in there. Because that's where you'll start to lose the realism. And I'm using the pencil very gently, which is basically blending into the other colours I've already put on there. Now this back tooth is much darker in most of the areas. So it would be a mistake 
if I then made that one as light as uh, the one in, you know, uh, two down from it that's really bright. It's going into shadow, shadow created by the top part of the mouth. And that tooth doesn't make sense really as we look at it now, but when I add a bit more detail and start to get the rest of the mouth in, hopefully it will then look like it's um, all correct. I'm blocking in just some of this fur, just so it, it, it all makes a bit more sense, as I said earlier on, that I did with the, uh, the jaw. I want to, although I'm not gonna, going to be doing a lot with this fur here, I put in the basics. So I'm just putting in a few darks. I put a few lights on top as well, just to give gives a bit better impression of uh, how the mouth is sitting actually on it. So I'm just blending a bit. I'll give me a good enough under layer. Now quite a sharp brown pencil. I want to get the edges of those ridges in, just working out roughly where they go. I'm not spending too much time on this, it is a demonstration after all, and what I'm really after is showing you how to do all these little elements so you can tackle with much more confidence if you get a, a, a commission or something for a pet portrait and you've got a dog with a, an open mouth like this, at least you have an idea of how to tackle all the highlights and the shadows. So now those lights are really going in. You can see it's starting to look much more realistic. And I'm using that very light gray, it's quite a soft pencil. The thing you'll find is as you go lighter with the pencils they become even softer and then it can become a little bit more tricky to get the details and different brands as well have different degrees of softness so although perhaps a Caran d'Ache would have a whiter white the trade-off with that is that the pencil after only a mark or two becomes blunt because it's so soft especially those lighter colors Now, as per usual, when a drawing is pretty much at the final stages, that's when I look to punch up the contrast. So that's where um, a lot I re-establish darks if they've gone a bit uh, muted or if perhaps I haven't just gone dark enough because it's not really till the end you, you see it all together and you think, oh, that could go a bit lighter or that could go a bit darker. So it's generally then I put the final touches of contrast in. And with those final details going in, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember, this is just a small part of a dog workshop I've got over on my Patreon art channel. And uh, that's on tier one, so it only costs $4 and you get access to hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of other pastel lessons, which also include other species of dogs as well. So it's really great if you want to be something like a pet portrait artist or wildlife artist, because there's lots of wildlife um, videos on there as well. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you all again very soon. Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies and I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details you see everything I do how I create my work. 
but it's not just for beginners it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well and this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details tips and techniques and as mentioned I've got lots of oil videos on there too so there really is something for everybody and you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just four dollars now over a thousand members strong hope to see you there soon